2013 was the first year of implementation for Yahara Clean, the plan to reduce the phosphorus load to each Yahara Lake by 50 percent. This in turn should cause a major reduction in the number of toxic algae blooms and double days when the lakes are clear and the beaches are open. To get there, countless public and private partners are coming together. The Clean Lakes Alliance is constantly developing those partnerships, offering technical guidance, financial help, making sure the right people are at the table. The Madison Metropolitan Sewerage District is spearheading Yahara Winds, the collaborative adaptive management pilot project that has more than 30 partners working on reducing phosphorus. Dane County passed its 2014 budget with more money for lakes efforts than ever before. The City of Madison is exploring new ways to reduce phosphorus in stormwater management. Yahara Pride Farms is the agricultural arm of the CLA, sharing the latest research and cutting-edge practices with each other. All of this is about complying with what's known as the phosphorus rule. Well, the phosphorus rule requires us to meet water quality standards throughout our lake system. In our watershed, Madison Metropolitan Sewerage District has said that they want to look at the flexible option known as adaptive management. The Hara Winds Pilot Project is looking at the entire watershed and all the things we can do within the watershed to really improve water quality. So we are working in the urban environment, we're working in the rural environment, we're working at the treatment plants. We're all looking at everything we can do to reduce the amount of phosphorus that's leaving our water. The unique thing about the phosphorus rule, unique to any other state efforts on phosphorus, are that it requires us to get clean water. Efforts in the past have had, we hope to get clean water. This one is very clear. We have water quality standards. We have to get there. To get there, Yahara Clean developed this list of 14 actions, five urban, nine rural. After year one of implementation, this is the new reality our community is creating. Usually developers will come in and they'll build on the land and then they'll have runoff and stormwater problems and issues after the development is done and it's very difficult to try to correct those after the fact. And so what Clean Lakes proposed to us and which we've embraced is let's look at doing the stormwater issues first. So we did a complete inventory of the land, the topography, the soils, natural features like the woods. These are the areas we want to protect. Our plan was developed around those natural attributes of the land. In my book, you're doing it the smart way, and it not only costs less, but it stops and prevents runoff and erosion uh, sooner, which will hopefully keep the lakes cleaner, and also preserves those features permanently. One of our major focuses right now is trying to go back and look at some of the older developments and making sure that we can take that runoff and take the pollutants out of it and protect the water resources. This pond behind me is a classic example of that. It's taking runoff from an area that was developed prior to a lot of our stormwater regulations and it's trying to clean up that water now. Unfortunately when these older areas were first being developed it was more of getting water as quickly as possible from A to B and B being the lake. In older areas where the greenway isn't maintained, trees will sprout so vegetation doesn't grow that well. And without vegetation to stabilize it, erosion happens. So now we have to kind of go in and, and rehab them. And last year we installed a couple of storm ponds to capture, I believe, about 100 pounds of phosphorus. We installed bioretention systems have a terrace swing garden program, so if a homeowner is interested, we will install a rain garden in front of their house. We declared 2013 in the city of Monona the year of the lakes. The first thing we did was audit how many stormwater outlets we had within the city limits. There were 110 and four and a half miles of lakeshore in Lake Monona. We prioritized which ones were the most needy of replacement or fixing. Today we're standing on number one. This one will take out 6,000 pounds of sediment each year. Very innovative design. 
the water comes and spins and centrifuges the debris and flats them out so that annually we'll just clean out the solids and a much cleaner water goes into the lake. North of Lake Mendota, where the watershed is mostly rural, farmers are working on innovative ways to keep the nutrients on the field and out of the water. Farmers have been uh, practicing no-tillage in, in the watershed for some time. It's constantly being modified and one of the things that we're trying to do with our cover crop program is allow a no-tillage into a cover crop. The cover crop helps loosen the soil while still protecting the soil by its roots and its vegetation on top of the ground. And uh, that allows for a farmer to come in and plant directly into the cover crop in the spring of the year with no tillage. Soil is the groundwork of all of our agronomic production, so we want it to stay where it's at. So the thinking for cover crops is if we can put a crop growing there during the period of time when we have bare soil, then it can protect protect it from the rain drops and the wind coming through. I like to call it stacking practices. Stacking good conservation practices or BMPs together to create a perfect uh, scenario for managing the, the soil on our farms. One of the most important pieces of our work is our work with digesters. They help farmers with manure management. We take manure that would have been spread um, raw on the fields. It goes through the digester process. At least 60% of the phosphorus is removed. And at the same time, we create enough green, renewable energy to, to power 2,500 homes. We also put money in the county budget this year and last year to purchase a new system that's called a nutrient concentration system. And that'll be up and online by the end of this year at the Springfield Digester. And what that will do, it will allow us to achieve 100% phosphorus reduction um, from the manure that goes through the digester. And that's really a game changer. One of our pieces of equipment that we demonstrated last fall with the, some of the area farmers was a vertical manure injection toolbar uh, and tanker, which does a wonderful job of placing manure below the surface of the ground, as well as not over tilling the soil so that it still can be planted under a minimum tillage situation. Much of the rural land that isn't agriculture is wetlands and creeks. Here, actions include dredging drainage ditches, stabilizing waterway banks, and harvesting wetland plants, all to keep sediment out of the waterways that run toward Lake Mendota. The reach we're in here of Doran Creek is a very flat reach, and this is a really good place for sediment to get trapped during small to moderate events. This has been happening here for well over 100 years, ever since this farmland was developed. The wetland has been built up by that sediment that it's trapped. However, during large events, that sediment gets washed away. And this sediment carries about half of the phosphorus that comes out of this watershed. By removing that sediment, we'll probably also increase opportunities for better wetland vegetation, better habitat. Uh, we built it about 13 months ago. Uh, the goal was to uh, basically keep the manure runoff from running out and uh, keep the rainwater from mixing in with the manure. In the long run, it'll definitely be worth it. Uh, I think it's also beneficial for the cattle. Uh, the heat of the summer, they're in the shade and they have more protection in the winter when it's real cold. Well, it's a site that's identified for protection both so that it can be a recreational resource and a site that could be restored. Six Mile Creek runs through the property which drains directly into Lake Mendota and so the county and other partners wanted to see it protected. The Clean Lakes Alliance helped facilitate the conversation between the county and the landowner, brought the parties together and uh, enabled the county to purchase the property. We have a wonderful system that includes the ag land and the wetlands and the places where people live. And um, there are several of these wetlands that um, have been drained and farmed and maybe are best used for uh, as wetlands to, to hold water and to hold phosphorus back. So as much as we can work with private landowners to protect those areas and prevent the phosphorus from moving down into lakes, we'll do a better job of keeping our lakes clean down for the whole system. Mm -hmm.